Okay, um, good evening everyone. Uh, first of all, I hope everybody doesn't mind me wittering on about kilns again. Um, it's about to snow, I think, outside, as uh, there's a precious little chance of doing any astro work, and um, I've been told to leave the house uh, because uh, Mrs. is busy. Anyway, so uh, I think earlier on in my little thread, um, I think it was Aidy um, pointed out that um, there might be an alternative to uh, building a two and a half kilowatt kiln um, by using a microwave. Um, so I had a little look, I, well I've looked at these microwave kilns before, um, but I thought, wow, that kind of actually looks quite, quite a lot of fun. So uh, I bought one, uh, obviously. So um, it wasn't very expensive, I think it was less than 50 quid with a few other bits and bobs chucked in. Um, it's, um, I've heard mixed reports about these kilns. Some people say that they work, some people say they don't, um, you know, problems with them and whatever. So the easiest way to find out is like, uh, is to use it. So, what? Well, yeah, so it's an, odd, it's an odd material, I must admit. It's a kind of like, it feels a cross, like a cross between polystyrene and chalk. It's quite dusty um, and very, very delicate. I mean, it literally will, you can almost, you know, you can mold it with, it, it will, it, it's very, very soft and very light. So there's a little vent in the top, let the heat out. This one's called Hot Pot. Um, diameter wise, it's about, it's not very big. It's uh, 16, 17, 16 and a half centimeters. So now, um, yeah, one of the problems, what to say the problems with these is that um, A, the working area is very small, so you can really only do sort of one piece at a time. And also uh, one of the other issues with them is that uh, there is no real way of controlling uh, temperature ramp up, dwell, and temperature uh, reduction like you can with sort of a conventional uh, kiln, like the one I'm, I'm in the process of building. You know, I suppose you could modify the microwave to, to pulse width modulate it, and you, you could you could do it. I could see how you could do it, but uh, with with the current kiln technology and whatnot, it's the, the microwave technology. It's kind of either on or it's off. So the the, the, the side effect of that is the temperature gets very very hot very very quickly uh, and then ma in a matter of minutes I mean a few minutes as far as I can work out and then and then the whole thing takes like half an hour to cool down compared with the nor normal firing cycle for glass which could be several hours uh, the problem with that is that you don't you don't you don't get the annealing process uh, one of the important factors of of a fusing glass is not the actual melting but the cooling so that it anneals properly and the you get a um, regular crystalline structure which makes the glass quite strong uh, I think with this process from what I've read obviously I'm just talking from what I've read um, because the glass cools quite quickly you get a chaotic structure which makes the glass very brittle not only prone to breaking as it comes out of this kiln but also prone to breaking afterwards as temperatures fluctuate around it so that's one of the big problems is you, you can't anneal the glass properly f from what I understand so anyway so let's have a look at this thing um, so it's let's have a look at the base first take the lid off the base is just the same material and it's just a disc uh, with a little raised bit um, so your working area is uh, well it's 11 across but you, you've got to go to a you, you can't go to more than about a one or one and a half centimeters of the side so you're probably looking at a working area of about eight centimeters something like that, sort of this sort of area. So big enough to put one small piece in the middle. So it's only one piece, but the process is very, very, very quick as far as I can make out. So that's the base, let's get that out of the way. Um, here's the sort of clever bit, if you were. So it's just the same material hollowed out, and there's the hole, obviously. Um, and this is the clever bit, is this, this gray coating. Now this is uh, called a susceptor. Um, and they, they make it out of various materials. I mean, you can make it out of silicon carbide, magnetite, graphite, mixtures of the three. There's some YouTube videos and guys made, 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 make it, in, made it himself, uh, mixing it with like sugar solution to stick to the walls and then baking it on all sorts of different... But the idea is you've got a conductive kind of ring and the, the, the susceptor absorbs the microwaves and then, then gets obviously very, very hot and then directs the heat towards the glass and heats it very, very quickly, which is one of the one of the problems with, with these kilns is you, you say you can't control that heating process. The best way to do it, I suppose, is to ramp down the microwave power and then at least you, that gives you a bit more time. It takes longer to heat up, but we're still only talking minutes, not hours. So I thought, you know, it, it was uh, a, bit, a, bit, a bit of fun to try it out. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put some glass together and we're going to bung it in and see what happens. Um, I've got a microwave here, which um, I used to use years ago for, for heating my daughter's uh, uh, milk. Also, uh, not a recommended practice, but she seems to have survived. 
Um, so the microwave's been sitting out here for ages and only used for the occasional pot noodle. So I've just modified it. Um, I know alarm bells are ringing. Um, not, uh, not that badly modified. It had a light inside, um, which was quite bright. And wa I wanted us to be able to see the uh, orange glow from the glass through this little hole. So uh, the light was just overwhelmingly bright. So um, I've just whipped the lid off and disconnected the uh, pygmy bulb. So uh, it's now a dark microwave. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, what I'll do is I'll put some glass together and we'll, put, we'll bung it in here and slam it in the microwave and then um, you know see what happens. I mean, I've never done this before, um, so uh, it'll be good fun. And as we all know, you can't put a price on fun. So uh, back in a bit. Cheers. Okay, uh, back again. Um, sorry about the occasional sniff. I've got a bit of a cold. Anyway, right. Uh, so I've, I've, I've picked some glass as part of this... Um, Little purchase. I got like a, a bag of a sample pack of all sorts of stuff. That's kind of like little crystally things and bits of glass and stuff. I don't even know what it is. I don't know. Whatever. Um, and there's also a little instruction manual which I've had a quick read of. Um, anyway, so uh, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I've picked so all these glasses compatible. So this is all C C90 glass. You get C90, C96. But that's the coefficient of expansion, so it has to be the same type of glass, otherwise it all goes horribly wrong. Because uh, obviously it won't fuse, it'll just, sh it'll just split. So, um, before you can put any glass on, you, uh, you also get supplied with this, some of this stuff. We've got um, like a, um, a, a fibre blanket stuff. This uh, is basically acts as a thermal insulator, so you sort of pop that on there like that. And then you get this stuff, which is... Um, Fibre paper uh, says this side down, which is a bit of a giveaway. This just uh, gives a nice smooth surface so that you don't you, you don't get an unpleasant texture on the on the bottom of the glass when you fuse it. Um, so you get a nice so you put that on there like that. All good. Uh, now I've cleaned this glass or tried to with uh, acetone. Uh, try and get any grease and muck off it. God knows what this is going to turn out like. I've got absolutely no idea. So pop that in the middle there. Um, now I picked this. This is this is a little piece of dichroic glass. It's just kind of like difficult to see on this camera, but it's kind of like a I don't know, it's a bit of a weird shape and it's kind of greeny, iridescent -y sort of colour. So I thought I'd pop that on there like that. Uh, back around, excuse me, fingers. Yeah, so I pop that on there like that, sort of somewhere in the middle. All right, it's supposed to be central obviously to get the heat distribution right and then there's some clear glass here so I'm hoping this will fuse over the top uh, let's say I don't know what I'm doing but we'll give it a go so I'll pop that on the top of there now um, these these uh, glass stacks I'm hoping that's all going to stay nice and steady and not move around in the in the, in the microwave we'll soon find out these stacks should be about six mil high because um, um, uh, glass obviously when it's molten is like a liquid and it's got a um, surface tension, uh, I think they call it like a surface tension radius or a surface tension distance of about five millimeters. So if the stack's about five or six millimeters then you'll, you'll get a nice shape. If it's too shallow then it'll bend in on the sides and if it's too deep it'll bulge out. So that, that's about right. Okay, well I think, I don't know what I'm doing here obviously, So, uh, but I'm going to slam that in the, in the microwave and, and, and see what happens. So uh, I'll be back in a minute. Cheers. Okay, um, right we've got the uh Got the piece in the uh, in the microwave. Um, there's the um, there's the hot pot in here. I've set this to 10 minutes and at its highest power, which is 700 watts. Uh, right, let's kick it off and see what happens. Um, close the drawer. I have actually the, gl the glass has actually been tacked together using a special glass tacking glue. It's it, it burns off allegedly. <clears throat> so 10 minutes, 700 watts. Press play. Okay, uh, well, I won't sit here for 10 minutes videoing a microwave. Uh, I'll be back in a bit. Cheers. Okay, there's now uh, an orange glow coming from the inside of the kiln. You can't really see on the camera, but believe me, there is. Um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna wait till it gets down to, well, it's had um, 12 minutes in 15 seconds. So when it gets down to 12 minutes, I'm trying to keep the, consistent so come up to 12 minutes now um, if I lift the lid you can see it glowing red hot 
I'm going to give it a little bit longer. Give it another minute. And then I'll take it out. But it, it's incredible. It, it sort of sits there doing nothing for ages. Um, it's quite, so it takes quite a long time in this microwave because I don't think this microwave is packing much of a punch. Um, and then, uh, and then all of a sudden, it's, you can see the glow through the top of the kiln. It's, re it's really amazing. A bit of kick, considering it's just uh, a completely passive um, kiln, just uh, insulated with the susceptor painted on the inside. It's really quite good. Um, right. Anyway, well, I'll, uh, I'll come back whenever I've got it all out.